tonight facing charges. An Iron Range Elementary school teacher is facing felony counts for allegedly sending lewd images to minors. Plus, a popular Duluth brewery catches fire overnight. How much damage was caused? And vote to disband. The Minneapolis City Council has voted to disband the city's police department, which moves it one step closer to letting voters decide. From CBS 3 Duluth, this is the CBS 3 News at 6. Good evening, I'm Anthony Mack. Kristen's off tonight. Thanks for joining us. As coronavirus testing increases and more states open up, COVID-19 cases have begun to soar. While the number of cases has held steady around our region, other states are scaling back their reopening plans. Texas is shutting down its bars and scaling back restaurant dining as COVID-19 cases continue to surge there. Republican Governor Greg Abbott made the move Friday after Texas reported more than 17,000 new confirmed cases in just the last three days. That includes a single-day record of nearly 6,000 confirmed cases yesterday. Governor Abbott also says outdoor gatherings of 100 people or more must be approved by local governments. In our region, right now, St. Louis County health officials are reporting a total of 152 confirmed cases. That's up 10 from last week. County health experts added they've seen slight increases of COVID-19 cases over the last two weeks. But overall, the trend is downward. CBS 3's Leanne Valdez has more. Arizona numbers are upticking. Texas, Florida, California, they're all just increasing. As the number of COVID-19 cases rises across the country, people here in the Northland are taking notice, too. We take it very seriously. And even though Minnesota's restrictions have been lifted, Duluthians Jamie and Jenna Griffin still remain cautious. When we go out, we still wear masks. We will not eat in an indoor setting. Doing their best not to become a statistic. We just don't know like the long-term effects mm -hmm. and causes. St. Louis County Public Health Division Director Amy Westbrook says seeing more and more confirmed COVID-19 cases is normal now. We'll continue to see cases. There's really no doubt about that. Westbrook says the county has seen a slight increase of COVID-19 cases over the last two weeks. This past week, they reported 10 new cases, a number of which are in congregate care facilities. But overall, things are trending downward. We've leveled off or slightly increased the last two weeks. When asked if she sees Minnesota moving to close bars, restaurants, or other businesses again, Westbrook says it's less about trying to eradicate a virus and more about trying to manage community transmission. It's a pandemic, so we're going to see peaks and valleys across our state and across our county, across our country. Um, and we'll just have to readjust as a public health system making recommendations and the governor leading those in good prevention and control. Something the Griffins say they wouldn't be surprised if it did happen. Governor Walls is erring on the side of caution um, and safety, and I don't know, I appreciate that. New at 6, the Boys Fort Band is taking new steps to prevent the spread of COVID-19 after the first confirmed case was reported on the reservation last week. Last week, the chairperson notified band members that if they test positive and fail to abide by a new quarantine order, they could be banished from the reservation. She said they could also lose their tribal rights for up to five years. According to the Hibbing Daily Tribune, the Boys Fort Reservation Tribal Council's quarantine order asks anyone who has tested positive to isolate for 14 days. Meanwhile, other tribal nations in Minnesota have enacted a similar resolution, including the Fond du Lac Band. Band spokespeople say their resolution declares a public health emergency and outlines the powers to quarantine, de detain, and exclude individuals. The band said it has not had to enact those powers yet. You can find that full resolution on our website, cbs3duluth.com. And Dave joins us for a look at the weather. Dave, uh, it's still hot out there today, I presume. Yeah, the warm spell is in its second day, and it was the warmest in Wisconsin. Okay. We'll take a look at some of the high temps that came in so far today. And 88 degrees for Ashland, 88 for Solon Springs as well. Hayward and Superior not far behind at 86. Minnesota a little bit cooler, 83 in Hermantown, but a tolerable for some people, 78 degrees in the Hibbing area. I think for the next week, temperatures are going to stay warmer than normal like this. And as far as things go, I think they're going to stay drier than normal. There's the low pressure system that failed to materialize for most towns last night in our part of the world, came up more towards southern Wisconsin and southern Ontario and left Minnesota, Wisconsin and the Upper Peninsula alone for the most part. And now we have sunny high pressure coming in to set us up for a sunny, dry and warm weekend. Mostly sunny to partly cloudy with highs in the 80s 
and next week some 90s are possible as the warm spell continues. We'll show you the seven day in more detail in just a bit. Thanks, Dave. A fire at a Duluth brewery caused $75,000 in damages to a shed. Crews responded to Ursa Minor just before 1 o'clock this morning. They found the brewery shed near the back alley engulfed. A forklift and refrigeration unit were inside. Authorities say the fire did not make it into the brewery, which was closed at the time, but their vehicle was also damaged. Nobody was hurt. The cause is under investigation, and the tap room and patio is closed today. A Wild State, a cidery right down the road, is holding a concert fundraiser for Ursa Minor tonight. All donations will be given to Ursa Minor, along with a dollar from every drink purchased. A McGregor man faces attempted murder charges after authorities say he stabbed another man in the chest. 49-year-old Clifford Skinaway Jr. is facing three charges. According to the Aiken County Sheriff's Office, authorities were responding to a home in Spalding Township Thursday night on a report of a man who had a stab wound to his chest. When they arrived, they learned the suspect had left on a bicycle. They arrested him along Highway 65. The victim went uh, to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. Skinaway Jr. is being held in Aiken County Jail on $600,000 bail. Felony charges have been filed against a Hibbing Elementary School teacher after he allegedly sent naked pictures to four kids. Jordan Kachiever is a sixth grade teacher at Lincoln Elementary School. He's worked there for about four years. CBS 3's Emma Quinn has the latest for us tonight from Hibbing. Hibbing police say while charges have been filed, the 27-year-old is not in police custody. However, Coach Heaver has been placed on administrative leave as the school district has an ongoing investigation. According to court documents, a parent called Hibbing police last Saturday to report a Snapchat video sent to their 10-year-old. Authorities say that video showed, quote, a complete frontal nudity from the chin downward, end quote. The investigation also led authorities to a different video, which showed a man pulling down his underwear and exposing himself. The parent told authorities they believed the person in the video was Cochiever. Authorities met with Cochiever earlier this week. Cochiever claims he was intoxicated on June 15th when he sent inappropriate messages to four different teens. And this investigation is currently ongoing. Thanks, Emma. Meanwhile, Hibbing superintendent said they will take appropriate action when the criminal investigation is finished. The Hibbing Police Department is creating a new task force to address racism in the community and the department. Called Anchoring the Blue, the Hibbing Police Chief says the task force will be made up of community members. They'll meet regularly to address concerns about racism and safety in the city. The task force will also raise money for diversity training and scholarships for Hibbing High School students. The chief says the police department strives to treat everyone with respect, and this is another step towards that goal. A big employer in Itasca County plans to shut down its Big Fork facility and move operations to Canada. E2IP Technologies is a printed electronics company headquartered in Montreal. Their Big Fork facility employs 60 people and is the town of 500's largest employer. According to Itasca Economic Development Corporation spokespeople, E2IP took a major hit during the pandemic due to less demand for aviation products that they make. County leaders are looking at what the future could hold for the facility and what other business they could draw in. We do feel like it will have a big impact on Big Fork, which is why we've put so many resources behind this to try to um, find a, an option to keep that facility open. Those are good jobs. They were jobs with benefits um, and certainly in many cases, those are the people in the households that were holding the benefits. At more than 11 percent, Itasca County's current unemployment rate is the highest it's seen since the Great Recession. Itasca County is reporting 65 confirmed COVID-19 cases and 12 deaths. The Minneapolis City Council has unanimously voted to advance a plan that would do away with the city's police department one day. The council voted Friday in favor of a proposal to amend the city charter to replace the current department with the Department of Community Safety and Violence Prevention. That would prioritize a holistic and public health oriented approach. Several more bureaucratic obstacles would remain for the proposal to make it onto the November ballot where Minneapolis residents would have the final say. Here's what the city's mayor had to say. Now we need policy changes too. And over the coming months you will see a consistent drumbeat of policy changes coming from both myself and Chief Arredondo. Fry also said the city has fallen short and they need to make the necessary transformation right now, including a full culture shift in Minneapolis Police Department operations. Still to come on Live Local CBS 3 as more sports leagues roll out plans to resume competitions. A look at what goes into reopening a stadium. Details next. Today's high temp at the airport, 85 degrees, warmer than normal, and likely will stay that way for the week ahead. Might get humid too. 
Any rain chances coming from that humidity? We'll talk about them coming up after our break. Live, local, CBS3 News at 6 with Kristen Vaki, Anthony Matt, Kelly Hinson, and weather with meteorologist Dave Anderson on Live, local, CBS3. Catch Eye on Parenting every Thursday at 6 with me, Leanne Valdez on CBS3. Schneiderman's helps you celebrate life's happiest moments when everyone has a spot, even spot. It's BOGO time at Schneiderman's. Buy one item and get another half off during the 4th of July sale at Schneiderman's Furniture. I'm Carrie Harris, owner of Diabetic and Comfort Shoes. We have been in business in the Northland helping you with your everyday foot problems stemming from diabetes to plantar fasciitis for the past 17 years. Stop in and see the complete line of men's and women's shoes, from SAS to Allegria to Vionic for those millions of people battling plantar fasciitis. And we still have a great selection of comfortable shoes for diabetics. Medicare and Minnesota Healthcare approved. Remember, no foot problem is too big or too small. We'll find the way to your soul. We all deserve more summer. So DQ is bringing you two summer favorites in one. With the new drumstick blizzard with peanuts. A drumstick, the original Sunday cone, and our world famous vanilla soft serve. Let's fit more summer into every bite. DQ, happy tastes good. The U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame Museum in Eveleth is America's hockey show place to preserve history and honor the legends of the game. Tour their collection of memorabilia, video displays, and interactive exhibits honoring this game we love. Plan your visit today. Jimmy Jewelers is having a Neighbors Helping Neighbors event. We are partnering with the Superior YMCA to help those in need. When you bring in an item for donation, you will receive 25% off any in-stock finished jewelry. Numi Jewelers thanks you for shopping local. Tune in Saturday mornings for the Link RV lineup, where we will show you amazing RVs on our lot, like this 2020 Jayco Bunkhouse Travel Trailer with fiberglass sidewalls, bunk beds, and more for just $172 a month. Or check out this 2020 Jayco Eagle Half-Ton Swivel Fifth Wheel for only $333 a month. Want to see more? Then be sure to watch this Saturday. Visit us online at linkrvdirect.com or stop by to view our complete inventory. We have the largest selection of RVs in northwestern Wisconsin. Link RV, where reputation is everything. Schneiderman's helps you celebrate life's outrageous moments. More room for the king of the castle. Save up to $700 on select Tempur-Pedic adjustable sets. Plus, get $300 sleep cash only at Schneiderman Sleep. I traveled across America to find the toughest people. We are here to find out who is the toughest of them all. 12 hard-working Americans. I'm a third-generation farmer. Drywaller. My job gave me these, but my kids gave me this. <laughs> They'll be competing in real-world challenges. That coal is unforgiving. They'll bring their grit, <laughs> their sweat, <laughs> and their sheer determination. I don't give enough. But will it be enough? <laughs> Top is now. New series, Wednesday, July 8th on CBS. Watch Anthony Matt weekdays at 6 and 10 p.m. on live local CBS3 Duluth. Catch Eye on Parenting every Thursday at 6 with me, Leanne Valdez on CBS3. Now, the CBS3 Duluth Weathermax forecast with meteorologist Dave Anderson. Here's a live look up Highway 53 at the Ash Lake area pointing towards the north. And up towards the north, towards Ontario, you can see some clouds. Otherwise, it's really too beautiful for our own good. We need some rain. That chance last night fizzled out for most towns. They got it in Ontario and southern Wisconsin. And for our region, higher pressure taking over for the weekend is going to keep our sky on the blue side like you see up north right now. But eventually by Monday we get our next rain chance and we'll talk about how decent that one is in just a bit. Right now at the airport in Duluth, it's still 81 degrees. Relative humidity is 45 percent. Westerly northwesterly wind is running 14 miles per hour. And since we're still in the vicinity of a lower pressure system here, the barometer readings are a bit on the low side at 29.75 inches of mercury, but should go up as higher pressure filters in to bring us sunshine and more warmth for the weekend. Speaking of warmth, it's 82 in Watersmeet, 80 straight up in Ironwood, and 82 to 86 degrees here in northern Wisconsin. We find 82 towards Superior and 86 around the Hayward Cable area. Upper 70s for Moose Lake, 
Proctor's coming in at 81, and so is Two Harbors and Silver Bay. 79 Ely right now, 78 Hibbing, 78 as well for International Falls. I think everybody's going to cross into the 80s tomorrow, especially away from the lake. And cooler by the lake is going to be a fairly thin stripe of 70s. So taking a look at July-style weather coming our way just down the pike. Right now, we've got the showers in Ontario, like we mentioned, from that low-pressure system. And there's a little bit skirting down towards the south of Rhinelander, and a little bit has graced the folks in the UP in the past couple of hours. But again, with high pressure coming aboard, chasing away the lower pressure, it's going to be sunny and dry for the weekend and warm as well. Then come Monday, that's when we get our next chance for rain. Coming in from the west will be a couple of upper-level troughs of lower pressure, not full-fledged lows, just little bits of lift, enough to pre create perhaps a chance for showers and thunderstorms. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday from these two. Looks like Thursday is going to be the best chance for a payoff with a odds of 60%. And if it happens, we actually might get something that we can use. And we certainly need it. We're now six and a half inches roughly shy of where we should be for rain this year. Tonight, no chance of rain in Minnesota. Clear to partly cloudy sky with low temps. I think they'll run the range of 55 inland to 62 degrees by the lake. And getting into Wisconsin and Michigan, the low temps there should be about 55 to 59 degrees. Partly cloudy sky, northwesterly wind around the region 5 to 15 miles per hour. For tomorrow, Saturday in Wisconsin and the UP, high temps will run 80 to 86. It'll be mostly sunny with a northwesterly wind. In Minnesota, there's the 70s by the lake and there's the 80s inland. Mostly sunny sky there as well, but the difference will be a southwesterly wind on that side of the border. Okay, here comes the extended forecast. The sunny warm period lasts through Sunday, then a cloudy or perhaps rainy or warm period goes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And like I mentioned, Thursday gets the best chance, 60%. Some of our latest charts indicate that one could be a soaker, but we've heard that in the past month and it hasn't paid off. Keep our fingers crossed. Then by Friday, Tony, it clears up again, stays warm, and in fact could even warm up farther. There's a slight chance Friday... Uh, the Twin Ports here could crack 90 degrees. Ooh. My estimate of 85 might be undercutting a little okay. bit. If that happens, it'll be the first time since August 2018. So only two years. <laughs> yeah, 90 doesn't happen much in the you Twin know, Ports. You know, it sure doesn't. And it looks like, uh, you know, we're getting our first week of our two weeks of summer there, huh? <laughs> That's one way to look at it. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Major League Baseball is set to resume games in just about a month. In some cities, fans might be able to attend games in person. However, Target Field, the home of the Minnesota Twins, will be closed to fans for now. So why are stadiums among the last to open? Heather Brown explains. I am a great sports fan. I can't wait. I miss it tremendously. I miss uh, even just baseball in the park for kids. But even these fans wonder what a stadium with no fans feels like. I kind of wonder what, the, what it's even going to seem like on TV. So I put stadiums in the same category as rock concerts, even probably higher perhaps than nursing homes and jails and cruise ships. They're similar because they're all congregate settings. Dr. Peter Chin Hong is an infectious disease specialist. Which means from the virus perspective, a lot of mouths and noses are close to another, to a lot of other mouths and noses. And mouths and noses with emotion. Sometimes alcohol, maybe hugging or high fives. I am excited for Twins games. I'm excited for, for everything to go back open. So you know, go Minnesota, go Vikings. I can't imagine a place when people can go there and be sedate like you're listening to an algebra lecture. When assessing risk, experts look at how long is the contact, how many people, how do they get in and out, and how close are their droplets. So it usually falls with gravity to around three feet. That's why if you stay six feet away from someone, it gives you a cushion. Now, you can give that droplet superpower. Research shows shouting or singing can make that droplet go further. And then there's all the surfaces, which we now know isn't the main way to transmit the virus, but it's still a consideration. I'm less concerned about the ratings. I'm not unconcerned. Some states' guidelines mean fans will be welcome in the stadium. So the Astros and the Rangers, under your current limits, will be able to welcome fans back at 50% capacity. That's not happening here. But Minnesota health officials say they're watching it, weighing the relatively few confirmed cases that came after recent gatherings and protests with the jump in cases from people going to bars. When would you feel comfortable going back to a stadium? Um, it would depend. I would rather for it not to be that many people. I would be fine going myself, but Heather Brown. I think they still got a lot to work out. WCCO 4 News.
Minnesota sports teams say they are working with health officials and creating plans for a return back to their respective venues. Meanwhile, health officials say they are not ruling out a return to stadiums, but say the state is. Breaking stories that impact the Northland most. Turn to CBS 3. Catch Eye on Parenting every Thursday at 6 with me, Leanne Valdez, on CBS 3. CBS 3 Live Cams are brought to you by Kohler Chevrolet Buick GMC Cadillac. You're not just getting a car, you're getting Kohler. Be smart. Be active. Be confident. Vision Pro Optical is here for you. Specializing in eye exams, glasses, contacts, and billing your insurance. Serving the Northland for more than 30 years with you as our focus. Visit visionprooptical.com for hours and location details. Vision Pro Optical. Be and be seen. Oh my gosh. Wow. Who am I? Wow, is that really me? <laughs> They are some of the hottest videos on social media. Those videos claiming to instantly get rid of bags under your eyes. Celebrate this 4th of July knowing you look your best with Plexiderm. Lifestyle expert Annette Figaro is here to tell us why she says this one is for real. This one is for real and I'm so excited. We even have a video that the viewers can watch while you and I talk. And you'll notice the model has bags underneath his eyes and some sagging. And all he uses is a small amount and that's how easy it is. All right, what's the act? Of ingredient. Okay, so it's silicates that are minerals found in shale rock. And what it does is it tightens and lifts the appearance of bags underneath your eyes in as little as 10 minutes, no prescriptions, and very little effort. And I did this to my father. We were at home and we were screaming four minutes, 34 seconds, completely gone. My real true opinion is holy words I can't say on camera. <laughs> These lines bother me, they really do. And this is absolutely unbelievable. I mean, I could feel it just lifting my skin. It feels great, looks even better. I'm Neela, I'm 61 years old. I'm a professional personal trainer. It's so important to be in good health and to be fit and take care of yourself. How it makes you feel inside is amazing. Plexiderm, seriously, it fixes all that. It makes you feel as good outside as you do inside. Honest to God, it's amazing. There's nothing there, like the bags are gone. And not only does it work on the bags, it works on the appearance of crow's feet, fine lines, and wrinkles. So it targets all those problem areas. So this would be a daily thing or just when you want to like get rid of the bags? And yeah, you would it absolutely could be a daily thing. You have high school reunions, you have events you want to go to, you want to look years younger, this is it. This 4th of July is the best time to get Plexiderm for 14 dollars and 95 cents see it work for yourself after your first application your solution is at plexidermtrial.com or call the number on your screen tonight we honor the very best of daytime television see all your favorite daytime performances past daytime emmy show moments and your favorite daytime stars recognizing the best in daytime tv hosted by us talk about a fun-filled friday night I'll bring the popcorn. <laughs> the Daytime Emmy Awards tonight, 8, 7 central on CBS. Watch Anthony Mack weekdays at 6 and 10 p.m. on live local CBS 3 Duluth. Now, CBS 3 Sports with Kelly Hinson. While sports slowly returned to normal, a group of future UMD Bulldogs were putting the work in on the softball field down in Florida. Esco native Dia De Leon and Cloquet native Kiana Bender joined a trio of other Bulldog softball commits for a tournament down in Florida for a USSA national tournament. The team competed against a pool of made up of 21 other teams going two and four overall. But the goal was just to get back on the field. And as a bonus, they got to play with one another for the first time before playing at UMD next year. Every little pitch out and any like teaches us that we didn't know before. So every single time we play, it's going to help for next year. It was nice that we have the opportunity to more everyone else. I just think seeing better competition is just going to get us ready for college next year. And we know it's going to be a really good competition. So just seeing that down here is just going to help us for next year. It was awesome to get back on the field. It was so fun. 
playing with everyone, especially since I know I'll be playing with these girls next year. I just thought it was a great experience. DeLeon, Bender, Kelly Swink, Julia Granholz, and Caitlin Moore are 5 of 10 total in the 2020-21 Bulldog recruiting class. That's the largest recruiting class for UMD softball ever. As major sports organizations prepare for the return of play next month, more than a dozen NBA players have now tested positive for COVID-19. The NBA and the NBA PA have announced that out of 302 NBA players, Tested on Tuesday, 16 have tested positive for the coronavirus. Those players will self-isolate until cleared by a physician. The players who tested positive were not identified by the league or the union. The NBA is set to resume with 22 teams at the Disney World Complex in Orlando on July 30th. And speaking of Disney World, the San Jose Earthquakes were the first MLS team to arrive in Orlando this week. They were the first to take part in a full team training session yesterday at Disney's Wide World of Sports Complex. The Earthquakes are preparing for the league's MLS is back tournament. The tournament will feature every team in the league as the 2020 MLS season returns to action. Minnesota United opens play on Sunday, July 12th against Sporting Kansas City. And it was day two of the Travelers Championship at TPC River Highlands in Connecticut. And headlining today's action was Bryson DeChambeau on the 467-yard par 4 10th. DeChambeau's drive leaked right and found the path. From there, it rolled and rolled and rolled, picking up speed until finally it came to rest in the drainage grate nearly at the front edge of the green. And all his ball stayed on the path for well over a minute as it made its way toward the green, unfortunately, DeChambeau couldn't quite capitalize on his good fortune. His chip slid off the back of the green, and it took three or more shots to, to hole out for a bizarre bogey. Tony, you know a lot about not having a lot of good fortune on the golf course, right? I mean, I've seen your game. With that, I'm going to send it back to you. Never good fortune on the golf course for me. Hey, before we go, let's talk about an out-of-this-world contest. NASA is looking for new toilet designs for its astronauts. Needless to say, this commode would have to work in microgravity gravity, and lunar gravity. The space agency says the blueprints have to be, relatively speaking, straightforward. Complicated and time-intensive projects will likely be flushed. There are two categories in this contest, technical and junior, and those who enter must be at least 18 years old. And one of the top prizes... $35,000. Dave, you know anything about making toilets? <laughs> no, but I know a little bit about the Apollo missions and what a hassle it was for the astronauts. Okay. A couple of them said they just held it until they came back. Oof. <laughs> yeah, pretty uncomfortable getting into yeah. quarantine. All right, let's take a look at the forecast for the week ahead. It's going to start sunny and warm. Saturday and sunshine and Sunday should have sunshine, mostly sunny. High temps in the 80s for a lot of towns. Then another rain chance comes early Monday morning, 40% chance. Maybe it'll finally pay off through persistence because it could stick around through Thursday. That's the news for now. We'll see you back here at 10.